Hi everyone, I'm Sir Gulay and for this slide sets, we will be discussing filariasis. Filariasis often progresses to become chronic, debilitating, and disfiguring disease since its symptoms are unnoticed or unfamiliar to health workers. Filariasis is also known as elephantiasis because of the characteristic appearance in these patients. So how do I usually connect uh, filariasis and elephantiasis? I use this mnemonic. Patients with elephantiasis surely can't wear a fila. It is endemic in Region 5, Bicol, Region 8, Samar and Leyte, and Region 11, Davao. There are also other areas in the Philippines where elephantiasis or filariasis are recorded, as seen in this map. This is a news clipping reporting 33 cases of filariasis in South Cotabato. Filariasis is a vector-borne disease. So let us bring back this table which was shown to you during the introductory portion. Filariasis is caused by a helminth and the vectors are mosquitoes. There are actually a variety of mosquitoes. It includes Aedes, Anopheles, Mansonia, and Culex. Mosquitoes that carry the microscopic worms usually bite between the hours of dusk and dawn. Going back to dengue, remember our mnemonic? Dengue is for D, day biting. How about for filariasis? Please forgive my mnemonic because it's kind of ridiculous. Filaria, parang bamfira, because they bite between the hours of dusk and dawn. There are three different filarial species that can cause lymphatic filariasis in humans. Most of the infections worldwide are caused by Wuchereria bancrofti. In Asia, the disease is also caused by Brugia malayi and Brugia timori. The primary reservoir for filariasis is humans and the vector is mosquitoes. Transmission from human to human occurs via mosquito bites. This diagram from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention illustrates the life cycle of Wuchereria bancrofti. But don't worry, you do not have to memorize it. I just want to illustrate that during a blood meal, an infected mosquito, typically Mansonia and Aedes, introduces third-stage filarial larvae into the skin of the human host, where they penetrate into the bite wound. They develop into adults that commonly reside in the lymphatics. An adult worm lives for about 5 to 7 years. Although the parasite damages the limb system, most infected people have no symptoms and will never develop clinical symptoms. These people do not know they have lymphatic filariasis unless tested. Symptoms may take 9 months to 1 year to manifest after the initial infection. Acute manifestations include acute adenolymphangitis, dermatolymphangioadenitis, filarial fever, or tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. Acute adenolymphangitis manifests with sudden onset of fever and painful lymph adenopathy. Dermatolymphangioadenitis presents with edematous inflammatory flux and systemic symptoms such as fever, chills, myalgia, and headache. Filarial fever manifests as an acute, self-limited episodes of fever, often in the absence of lymphangitis or lymph adenopathy. Tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is caused by an immune hyperresponsiveness to microfilaria trapped in the lungs and is characterized by nocturnal wheezing. If we are going to oversimplify it, filariasis presents acutely with lymphangitis, lymphadenitis, fever, and wheezing. Lymphangitis is the inflammation of the lymphatic channels, while lymphadenitis is the inflammation of the lymph nodes. Chronic filariasis manifests with lymph edema, hydrocele, and renal involvement. The swelling and the decreased function of the lymph system make it difficult for the body to fight germs and infections. These people will have more bacterial infections in the skin and lymph system. This causes hardening and thickening of the skin, which is called elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is the last stage in lymph edema. It is characterized as non-fitting edema with skin thickening and overgrowths. It is non-reversible. Lymphatic disease involving the scrotum will result to hydrocele which could either be unilateral or bilateral. Diagnostic tests include peripheral blood smear, 
circulating filarial antigen for W. Bancrofti, and antifilarial antibody test. The standard method for diagnosing active infection is the identification of microfilaria in a blood smear by microscopic examination. Peripheral blood smear determines the presence of microfilaria. Of note, PBS must be taken between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. because the microfilaria have nocturnal periodicity. You can see in this slide the appearance of microfilaria under the microscope. Another test involves antigen detection of adult filarial worms. This is used only for W. Bancrofti. Immunochromatographic technique or ICT tests are available through the WHO. There is a card-based assay known as Binax Now Filariasis ICT. In contrast to PBS, Binax Now could be used anytime as it detects antigens. Antifilarial antibody tests could also be done and it shows elevated levels of antifilarial IgG4 in the blood. Other tests include CBC showing eosinophilia and elevated IgE noted in PPE. I hope you could still remember our mnemonic for IgE, IgE, E for EU, worms. So in filariasis, IgE is elevated. Imaging studies could also be done including ultrasound, Doppler, lymphocentigraphy, and chest x-ray. The drug of choice is diethylcarbamazine or DEC. It is given as a 1 or 12 day treatment of DEC 6 mg per kilogram per day. DEC kills the microfilaria and some of the adult worms. However, people with lymph edema and elephantiasis are unlikely to benefit. Most common side effects of DEC are dizziness, nausea, fever, headache, or pain in muscles or joints. Management of patients with filariasis also involves lymph edema therapies referral. To prevent lymph edema from getting worse, patients are referred to lymph edema therapies so they can be informed about some basic principles of care such as hygiene, elevation, exercises, skin and wound care, and wearing appropriate shoes. Compressive bandages are also used as part of the management. Surgical management includes surgical excision for hydrocyl. Reconstructive surgery involving lymphatic venous anastomosis have been attempted to improve lymphatic drainage, but the long-term benefits is still unclear. Since this is a vector-borne disease, avoiding mosquito bites helps prevent the disease. At night, the Centers for Disease Control recommends sleeping in air-conditioned room or sleeping under a mosquito net. Between dusk and dawn, people living in the area must wear long sleeves and trousers and use mosquito repellent on exposed skin. Mosquito control and environmental sanitation are also important. An annual mass drug administration implemented using various regimens with DEC, ivermectin, and albendazole has been launched by the Global Program for the Elimination of Lymphatic Filariasis. That ends the discussion on filariasis. Pause this video, gather your thoughts, and when you are ready, let us have a practice test. What is the etiologic agent of filariasis? A. Wuchereria bancrofti, D. Chikungunya, C. Aedes, or D. Culex? You have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is A, Wuchereria bancrofti. Filariasis primarily affects the A, blood, B, lung, C, lymph, D, heart. You have 5 seconds. If you answered C, you are correct. What is the drug of choice? A, ivermectin, B, DEC, C, doxycycline, D, albendazole. You have 5 seconds. B, DEC is the drug of choice. And lastly, the standard method for diagnosing active infection is A, PBS, B, detects presence of microfilaria, C, taken between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., or D, all of the above. You have 5 seconds. The standard method for diagnosing active infection is PBS, and options B and C describe PBS. Therefore, 
the correct answer is D, all of the above. If you got four questions correctly, you did a good job. If not, rewind this video to check your answers. This ends the slide set. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Memory Aid Nursing. Thank you.